Hi there, it's Clint again, and today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of one of our quick starts. This one is the host it myself. I already have a server, so we're going to go ahead and follow that quick start. Um, what I've already done is I've already gone out to Amazon and I've provisioned an environment. And this is a, going to be an example of somebody who, say, wants to run their own Zero Trust Overlay Network and they want to get up and running with a, a developer environment that is accessible from anywhere in the world. So in order to do that, you're going to need a server that is somewhere hosted in the cloud. Why would you want to do that? Well, you might want to do that because you might want to give access to yourself or to your friends from anywhere in the world, literally anywhere in the world, whether you're in a data center or at home like I am, or if you're uh, running applications in Azure or Amazon or any cloud vendor, really. Uh, so if you're doing like a multi-cloud setup, you want to be able to get at an overlay network and in order to do that, you're going to need it out on the open internet. So first thing you'll do is provision a server. Like I said, I already did that. The next thing you'll do is you'll change your firewall. You'll see that I'm using ports 8441 and 8442 below. So I've already enabled those holes in my firewall. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I need to figure out what my external DNS name is. I've already gone ahead and done that. So let me just flap over and set my external DNS name to the correct name. The next thing I'll do is run a quick update because this Ubuntu box sometimes doesn't come with the tools installed. I've already run this once. So this is actually going to be a little bit faster than it would be if you hadn't run it yet, but it's not very long. It takes maybe 30 seconds. The next thing I'll do is all these commands right here. These commands will set an external IP address, set some other variables, and then the most important thing, source a single script and then run a function provided by that script called express install. Let's go ahead and do that now. When I do that, the script will go out to GitHub and it will download the latest version. Once it's downloaded the latest version, it's going to put it somewhere on your behalf. In this case, it's in ZDBin ZD025.4. And then what will happen is it will start creating a PKI for you. A zero trust overlay network is all about uh, security, mutual TLS between all of the overlay pieces of the network. In order to have that mutual TLS connection, you're going to need a public, uh, a private key infrastructure set up. That's a chore. So uh, ZDCLI provides some nice functions to help you get started. And this script basically just uses that ZDCLI and knits it all together for you. And you can already see I'm done. Um, the script will create a controller. It will create an edge router. You see it started the controller up. And the reason why it starts the controller up is so that we can create an edge router using the ZDCLI. And so that we can create an edge router policy allowing public edge routers to every identity that we create. Uh, and then it creates a, an edge router and stops everything so that you're ready for the next step in the process. So what are we, about one minute into this recording? I'd say it's about a minute. Um, let's go ahead and finish this off. The next thing we'll do is we'll create some systemd files. All right, those systemd files are created. We will then copy those systemd files to the right place. We will reload systemd and we will start those services up. And now we will make sure that those services are running. You can see active running, active running. So what do we have? We've started our ZD controller. We've started our ZD router. We have a complete and total overlay network. That's all you need in order to create an overlay network. But we're not done. We're going to install the ZD administration console as well. So we'll click on installation and we're going to just follow these steps. I'm going to clone from GitHub. So let me go ahead and run that clone command. Next thing I'm going to do is CD to that location. And then I'm going to run apt install. This does take a little bit of time. So we'll let that chug. We'll go back and get our next command. Actually, the npm install is the one that takes the most time. Um, well, maybe it's not npm install. Maybe it's this. So I don't, I'm not going to speed this up. I'm going to do this in real time so you get a fever for what it takes to actually, you know, produce a overlay network, including a UI. So we'll just sit here and we'll watch the paint dry. We'll watch the console tick on by. Um, I could take you on a small tour, but you can see already it's going pretty quickly. We're at 36% already. So instead of taking you on a tour of the UI, we will just sit here and watch it happen. I could.
could speed this up, but I am choosing to not speed it up so that you can see how long it actually takes me. And, 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 drum roll please. We're at the 99% progress marker, just like other operating systems. Not quite accurate. <laughs> anytime now. Anytime now. I'm sure it'll be done anytime. And, and it's done. All right, now we're going to run npm install. This is usually pretty quick. Um, this is what goes and builds the console for us. So this is emulating getting the latest and the greatest ZD administration console and turning it on. Okay, and once that's done, we can then create a couple of sim links. This will allow us to use ZD admin console with uh, TLS, HTTPS. We'll make a systemd file, we'll copy that systemd file, we'll reload systemd and then start ZD console. So let's do all those things. Once that's complete, we should now be able to issue a system control status for ZD console and it should also be running. Now at this point, if I were to, actually let me uh, echo my external DNS name, nope, DNS name. Now if I were to go to this URL, HTTPS, and I'm gonna use 8441, this is the URL of the controller, you can see that it responded, and you can see that it is serving up the API. Now I'm going to change that to 8443, and now we are running the administration console. Oops, I need to put in the URL, which is HTTPS, and then the controller at port, which is 8441. I must have done that too quickly. There we go. Uh, that's the wrong password. That's the right password. And now we are in our ZD administration console. And that's how long it took for me to stand up an entire Zero Trust overlay network. You can see I have a couple of identities already provisioned, my default admin, and then not now, please. And then the edge router itself, which shows us being online. You can peruse router policies if you like and see some service policies and start exploring the, the solution that you've just created. Well, that's all I've got for now. That was a really quick video just showing you how to go through a host it myself, I have a server, quick start. We'll see you next time.